This is my 2002 slash 2003 Range Rover HSE. This is a 2012 Range Rover Westminster. And this is Matt from High Peak Autos. And today then we're going to be looking at the differences between the 2002 model Range Rover, the very first iteration of said Range Rover, and the very last, which is the 2012 Westminster, which Matt has very kindly brought down today. Well, here we are then in Matt's lovely L322 Westminster. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the channel today. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate it. I'm and gonna actually... stop looking directly at the lens. <laughs> so you're thinking about buying one of these, basically, a facelift 09 onwards. I absolutely love my Range Rover, um, but it's just not, I've never really been able to enjoy it because there's just been issues with it all the time. Right, um, okay. And it's at that point where it's worth so little that is it worth pouring more money into it yeah. to keep it maintained or just actually biting the bullet and spending a bit of cash yeah. getting yourself a newer one. At that point, I think you either, you're better off either using and abusing it uh, and treating it as, for, or taking it for what it is basically, as just yeah. a cheap, valueless Range Rover that still does the job. Yeah. Or yes, upgrading it completely because to spend a couple of grand or more fixing yours, there's no point because you won't get it back. No. Unless you're gonna keep it for 10 years, which I don't think you, you would want to anyway. But I thought as we were meeting up today, um, yeah. and I was gonna give this a little go, we could talk about some of the differences between this and mine because we were realizing on the way up here that actually mine is basically the most basic, earliest Range Rover you could have bought yeah. of the L322 yeah. um, generation. And this is the opposite. The last of, yeah. The latest and best specs. This is the Westminster. Well, I, I thought that the Westminster was as much as of a, of a Range of a nerd as I am, I thought that the Westminster was the top of the tree, but I don't think it is. I still it's think not. the autobiography pipped it. Okay. Because although this is quite well specced, you don't have the Alcantara or leather headliner. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, I know, disgusting. Fabric, I know. <laughs> I don't know what else it's missing, but that's that's an obvious one. Yeah. But it has got pretty much everything else. Yeah. So already, um, well, for a start, the air conditioning works yeah, in this. Yes. Doesn't work in mine. That's going to be fun when we're filming that in a minute. <laughs> Um, and I've got my cooled seat on, which is yeah. super, super nice. I love these huge knobs. I do love a nice knob every now and then. These seats as well are so comfortable because in mine, they're sort of these sort of smaller, horrible things. Um, yeah. Not much sort of padding. I hadn't realized that to be honest. Yeah. But these are really thick and padded, aren't they? Yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. I mentioned this in a video that I did recently, but when I jumped in this from my L405, late 2015 L405, yeah. this felt like a massive downgrade because it just felt old in comparison. Yeah. But now I've been without that for a few weeks. Every time I drive this, you can appreciate it for what it is. It just feel like a, it does feel like a genuine luxury car, doesn't it? It, do, it really does. I mean, compared to mine, this feels like a totally different thing. Yeah. So I guess the main difference between this and uh, my one actually is the power plant. So this yeah. is the 4.4 TDVA. Yes, yeah. Whereas Which, mine is a naturally aspirated 4.4 petrol. Yeah, a BMW motor. This is a Ford motor, isn't it? The 4.4 diesel. Yes. Or Ford derived anyway. Um, and this is basically basically the same engine that, that they used right up until two years ago, pretty much. Really? Yeah, it's the same engine, but I think the L405 used an SDV8, which is twin turbo. I think this is single turbo. Ah, okay. I could be wrong there. But already just sort of pottering around town, I can feel that it's got um, yeah. just so much torque. Yeah. I mean, that's the main thing with these engines, isn't it? Whereas my yeah. petrol, actually, when I was following you up to our filming spot um, earlier, yeah. It was actually, doesn't have much torque. It was labouring a little bit, yeah, having to yeah. drop down some gears to yeah. keep up with you. So, yeah, it's my favourite Range Rover engine because it just suits the car better. You have plenty of torque and still reasonable fuel economy. So, what sort of fuel economy? I know this isn't your personal car, but you've driven yeah. it around a little bit, haven't you? So what what sort of fuel um, economy would you return? average? Early twenties. Early twenties on average, which and then, isn't good if you're used to a hybrid Yaris or something. But it's good if you're used to a 4.4 Range Rover. Mine will average, my average is 17. Is it? Right, okay. so that's, overall, not, that's not bad. It's for, not for awful, it but I do generally try to drive it frugally. Yeah. Right, okay. Always sort of letting off when I can um, and avoiding braking unnecessarily. So I have I a mind for yours it. would have been 14 or 15 yeah. or something. And then on a run, I probably am getting about 20. But yeah, yeah. would this get more than that? Oh, on a run, yeah, definitely. Yeah, You'll 30. get 32 or something on a run. Okay. That is a big bonus. Yeah. The L405 is even better because it's it's got a new lightweight body and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. This is still a heavy car. And then the other thing that this um, is a big upgrade, obviously, through the generations of the L322, obviously, started off with what I've got, which is a ZF5 speed. Yes. Then it went to a six. Yeah. 
and this then of course a, this is an eight speed eight speed yeah. with a sort of nice flappy paddle yeah. actually yeah and the advantage with this over the, the 3.6 TDV8 you get something like an extra 40 horsepower and the later box because that's only a six speed not the eight. Oh, is it so you couldn't get yeah. the eight in the 3.6 no no, I don't think I'm not you quizzing could. you, I no, don't know either. I don't think oh, you could. Oh, so, Mr. Car dealer, <laughs> high peak autos. I don't think you could. I think it was all, as soon as they introduced the 4.4, it came with an 8 speed. Gotcha. But in terms of this, yeah. in comparison to mine, just yeah. from sitting here, yeah. um, I can actually see so many extra things. Yeah. First of all is obviously this screen, which has got that clever sort of split yeah, the dual video screen. display. Yeah, yeah split glove box yeah um, my glove box when you try oh, and open it just falls out one. right okay <laughs> um, also this side automatic lights to the updated glass yes. cockpit display yeah. big paddles here yeah cruise control yeah uh, on Heated the wheel. wheel and obviously the sunroof. Sort of sunroof the list actually keeps going yeah. on to be honest headliner with, with fabric that still sticks to the <laughs> to the roof something that dates this I think is the fact that it's got digital DAB radio but there's no Bluetooth audio, so you can't play your music through it. So you'd have to come up with some sort of third-party solution. Which is a bit shocking for 2012, yeah, really, I know, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I had a 2012 Sport a few years ago, and at that point it was like the best thing I'd ever had, and it didn't have it, and it was frustrating, because yeah. it's quite a big thing nowadays, isn't it? It is sort of an essential. You know what, from like an ex external point of view, or a styling point of view, I prefer yours, because it's, it's a cleaner look. I like the boxy headlights, so and I like I. the amber so indicators and brake So light. do I, yeah. The funny thing is, when, when I got my first L322, it was in late 05, so it was the first of the facelift one with the mesh grille, an old TD6, but it was that point where they did like a crossover few months, where you could have got the TDV, uh, TD6, but with the mesh grille of like the 07 model. Yes. And at that point, I'd have been gutted if I'd have got one like yours, because at that point I wanted the newest one possible but over time I think yours has aged better. You've only got the two fins down the sides rather than the fussy vents that you get on this and you've just got the clean horizontal lines on the front um, grill as opposed to the mesh on this. Yes, I really like the front grill actually even though it's very plasticky and everything. Yeah, so do I. I just think it's, it's sleeker looking because on this, on the facelift 09 onwards, they're really chunky and I, I, I don't like that. I think they look better on the previous pre-facelift models. The proper old fashioned key that isn't it? That's the key for my Range Rover. That's something I like about this generation because you get these really heavy. They just feel well. They're, they're, not, they're not well built because they? they're always they always peel. You expect to just press a button but, there and a Swiss Army knife tool yeah, comes I know. out, don't you? I know. You know what? It doesn't. I don't feel like I'd want an L four hundred five necessarily after driving this. It feels almost up to that level. Yeah, yeah. I'd need to get into another one and maybe a better one. But we were saying that it's funny because the price is if, certainly if you're going for if you're going for a high mileage. Um, L405 yeah and a pretty good L322 they're only five grand apart five or something, grand. aren't they yeah so I, I'd go with the L405 personally yeah having said that I would want a facelift 2015 L405 which is still 32 34 yeah. because I'd want the heated seat buttons I'd want the the reverse camera washer jet <laughs> you need to get I'm a just grip. I'm just I'm just spoiled yeah <laughs> but how do you have to go to 2016 or 2017 to get the larger display? Yeah, 2017. So my then mate, you're at 40 grand. My mate's got one, an autobiography 2017, which still looks the same on the outside, but the inside you've got the new dash, yeah, new gauge uh, cluster or whatever, yeah, and the new widescreen nav, which is so much better. The, the camera's crystal clear, but you, you're talking an extra 10 grand. And then where do you stop? Because then at that point you're spending 45. You may as well spend 55 on an 18 facelift. And this is 585 a year to tax. Or whatever. Okay. Tax is one of those things that I always find really funny that people get worked up about. Because yeah. number one, yeah. we actually have it really, really good in we this do. country. We do absolutely. If in you Ireland, in, yeah, Ireland, two grand, three grand for something like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah Netherlands, absolutely. yeah. Most of yeah. Europe actually. People um, balk at the, the idea of paying 600 quid a year. I actually think it's it's good. It's, it's very good. It's cheap. It's cheap, and it's also fifty quid a year. Yeah. As opposed to thirty quid a year if you get something in the lower bracket. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What, you know, honestly, the amount of people you know, a month. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The amount of people um, that I, I sell cars to at work that will get so sort of bogged down in um, trying to save money on tax, they'll spend two or three grand upgrading the car to save themselves three hundred quid a year on tax. And I just think, can you it's not the see that? that you're not saving any money. You're giving me three grand to get a, a newer car that's yeah. cheaper to tax. So that's six years. Well, no, exactly. You're only going to have it three three years. Exactly. Maybe. 
And it's the same with fuel economy. Yeah. People will spend a lot more money exactly. to get something that does 10 miles per gallon more. But yeah. actually, if you did the maths yeah. and you do 10,000 miles a year, yeah. that's going to be like eight years of driving yeah. to even get close. Exactly. You exactly. know? People are short sighted, they just panic about things like that. Yeah. So, what about the cosmetic differences? We've touched on them a little bit, but. Um, yeah, for anybody that doesn't know anything about cars, they look basically the same, don't they? If yeah. you're a complete anorak, like you or I, then you'll be able to spot them off a mile off. So you've got the, the side vents that are different. Yeah. They changed, the, yours ran from like 02 to 05, then it was facelifted from late 05 to 2009. Yeah. Then 09 onwards got this this shape with chunky bumpers and everything. Yeah. So the grills slightly change. They went from two grill, two fins to three fins, back to two fins with mesh. Such a loser, such a loser, honestly. That I know all this <laughs> no, it's, it's actually quite impressive. It's completely to be unscripted this as well. I just know it off the somewhere, which is I need to get out more. <laughs> that's that's nice. cool, isn't it? A CLA forty five S with a V ten plate on it. Yeah. I always look at that and think, well, what what did he have before yeah, exactly, he sold <laughs> exactly, to yeah. get something more economical? Yeah. That looks. I've never seen one of those Me as, a, as a as an estate. Vent, as no. a, yeah. That's Me gorgeous. That's an interesting choice, you know. Rather than. Hmm. I like that car a lot. Yeah. So here we are then in the Giverny Green. Giverny Green, yeah. And what you just said, that's a region in France. It's a region in France. Learn something yeah. new every day. Yeah. I, I love this colour, to be honest. I've always liked this colour. It looks so good, doesn't it, without the privacy glass as yeah. well. It just looks yeah. very... Oh, there's a water bottle on the bonnet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston had one of this colour. Did she? I remember seeing a picture of her in it. See, that's why people like your videos, because you know things like that. <laughs> Straight away, then, it, fi well, it feels just like a Range Rover, basically. Do but, you think? Okay, yeah. I'll take that as a compliment. But... I haven't driven one of these for years, and, and the seats are firm. They feel like BMW seats. Rather, it feels like I'm in the seats from an X5 rather than a, a luxurious Range Rover. Yeah. I can't believe the difference, to be honest. I didn't realise they'd changed that much. I, I, I love this era of BMW, like early 2000s, BM, late 90s, early 2000s BMW. So I like all this. As much as it does feel a bit old now, I, I quite like all the um, BMW era switches and buttons. I think the best thing that's BMW about this car though is definitely yeah. the engine. Yeah. Because um, it's got such a nice, I actually really enjoy the sound it makes from inside. Yeah. It just makes such a nice V8 growl. Yeah. When you sort of, you can be as honest as no, you uh, like, by the way, about this car. This particular one is quite a scabby example, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> it's quite, there are, yeah, there are lots of things wrong with it, but for the money, I, quite, I think that's quite appealing, the fact that you've got so little in it, you can just treat it how you like. That's that's the charm of a Range Rover, I think. The fact that you can park it wherever you like, open your door onto a dry stone wall, yeah. doesn't really matter. Certainly does it? this one. Yeah. Because it's worth about the fuel I put in it. Yeah, exactly. What do you think about the ride quality in this then? It feels, every, everything on this feels firmer. The seats are firmer, yeah. the steering wheel's firmer, it's yeah. not as spongy. No, and it's The also, ride feels slightly firmer, I think. Yeah. But where we are now definitely feels like Range Rover country. Definitely. And almost I'd argue that this seems to fit in better. Yeah. Because it is just so... It's a workhorse, isn't it? It's a very, workhorse. Yeah, and it's... And you know something else? As cars keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this doesn't feel that big. They they are... The Westminster is ever so slightly bigger by sort of a, yeah. a, a measurement of centimetres. Yeah. Or for your American centimetres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, it just... It actually feels a lot bigger than that. Yeah, when you, yeah. I, I, I felt that in that as well. This feels smaller. It and does. More. It's weird. That's one concern. I've not, I've not seen in person the new. I don't even know what it's called. The new Range Rover. Yes. L, whatever it is called. Um, but it's massive, isn't it? It'll be huge. It's going to be huge. And You'd for really these roads around here. You know, you just. It's not built for this country anymore, which is a I'm shame. I'm so interested to have a go in one of those. Though. Me I too. Really, I just because mainly, I just want to because the L four hundred five is yeah. gorgeous in the yeah. way it drives. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing that's an better. Improvement on is, that. Can it be any better? Exactly. That would be amazing. You, you, you can't beat the. We're proper Land Rover fanboys, but I, you can't beat the L405, the, the drive of the L405. This is why when people always say to me when I when I buy a Range Rover or, or buy a you know do a Range Rover video, oh, you should have bought a, uh, a Land Cruiser. It isn't the same, is it? No. It's not the same. It's no. And and they're thinking the Land Rover is oh, a luxury car. I don't care about. The Land Cruiser is great at reliability, but the Range Rover is great at everything else. And I think to be honest. The best line you've ever said, and I've re I've quoted it in some of my videos, is yeah. 
buy the car that you want. Yeah, I know. Fix it when it yeah, breaks. Get on with it. I know. That's I know. absolutely true. And I haven't everyone's heard anyone an disagree. Expert, aren't they? That's everyone's the an armchair expert. And most of them haven't even owned one. That, most of them haven't even owned one. The ones that have something to say. About I get it. I get comments all the time on Land Rover videos from people, and it'll be something like I had one recently, and it's like. Um, Oh, my mate bought one of these for five grand and within three months he put another five grand into it well you're looking at that the wrong way so now he's got a well sorted range of it for ten grand yeah. which is a bargain yeah. however you look at it we, you know what we should just make a podcast where we just rant about a typical you should definitely do a podcast yeah I know, I know I know rant about types of um, buyers and, and just, yeah. just people I mean yeah. I absolutely I hate people yeah I think they're miserable things. Yeah. So it'd be lovely to just sit for an hour. I'm all. not a big fan. Once you've once you've spent any time, any amount of time, dealing with the retail public, you just develop a, a hatred for them. <laughs> you didn't expect me to say this, I don't think, but I'm quite impressed with it, really. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Because it still it doesn't feel like a 20 year old car. I expected it to feel really loose, and it doesn't. It feels it. it feels like I'm in a BMW of this era. It feels quite sharp. It's almost too sharp. It's almost too tight to be yeah. a luxury. Which yeah. is weird, isn't it? Because you think a 20-year-old car done 127 yeah. doesn't deserve to feel as tight as this does. No, it doesn't, actually. You're right. So this is an HSE. This is a HSE. the UK was mid-spec then, so the Vogue was above it. I think this was like bottom at the bottom. Right, okay. Because it doesn't, yeah, no heated so oil. So a Vogue would have had a heated steering wheel, yeah. heated rear seats, yeah. sunroof. Yeah. That's about it, though, I think. I think that's it about it. It wouldn't have had cooled seats, because that wasn't an option until 06. No, that that came later, didn't it, with yeah. the sort of twisted dials? Yeah. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think you're right. That's probably that's pretty more much it. it. I don't know if things like double glazed windows were an option. I don't know. Um, or that just came just later. I think with a facelift, yeah. This video has just been you and I... Two, ner- two getting, Range Rover nerds. <laughs> getting all yeah, excited about Range Rovers. Why not? Why They're great they cars. Go. They are great cars. Why have you not straight poked it yet? I've thought about that, but then you know what? This was my only car that is yeah, actually a right. runabout that's quiet. And I thought it you sounds like lo- everything. It sounds, it sounds lovely good anyway, as it is, it? you know. And I yeah. think it would just ruin it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would really be tacky as yeah, hell. Yeah, it would. It would. Well then, there we have it. That's been uh, a drive, basically, in both my 2002 slash 2003. It sounds better for the title. Yeah, 2002, 2002 versus 2012. There are no differences anyway, are there? No. Um, yeah, in that, and then your Westminster, which I have to say has been a real pleasure for me actually because i've never driven a uh, newer l322 no and it didn't disappoint in terms of yeah you know it is it feels like the l405 to me it's been a while since i drove one yeah but it does feel so much more sort of supple and refined than I mine it's interesting to drive cars that are um 10 years apart yes because i didn't i've never driven them back to back like that before no ultimately um and i think you were quite complimentary about mine but that is still a Range Rover and it drives like a Range Rover, yeah, yeah. but you can really feel sort of each year of refinement that's gone into you this can, iteration. But you can also appreciate how far advanced that was for its for its age. Yeah. And I bearing think. in mind that that, for you know, year. isn't mechanically perfect. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, I mean, it, they, they are wonderful cars yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's why we Absolutely. love them so much. Mm. Big thank you, of course, to Matt for no joining me today and for agreeing to drive my ropey old Jiminy Green thing. But it's been really fun. Yeah, no, <laughs> I've, I've really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been great to finally meet you and do a video with you. I know, actually, I get so many comments. Going, yeah. Have you seen Matt the High Peak, yeah. from High Peak Autos? He's got this and this. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> I talk to him all the time. <laughs> and for about a year, we've been trying to organise something. Yeah, anyway, we've yeah. finally done it. Yeah. Big thanks to all of you, of course, for watching. And make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And we'll see you all very, very soon.